Starbase has had a wild history ever since SpaceX moved in only nine years ago. Since then, they've transformed the area from wetlands to a launch site at a revolutionary pace. So let's take a quick look back at all the work needed to get us here for the second full flight of Starship. Let's start back in 1967, when work began on Boca Chica Village, then known as Kennedy Shores. It was intended to be a small town just over a mile from the nearby Boca Chica Beach. However, a major hurricane hit the in-progress town, stopping construction at only around 30 houses built. Fast forwarding to 2012, SpaceX began looking for a new, private launch site for their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. After considering seven sites around the US, SpaceX decided to build their new launch site in Boca Chica, Texas. The launch pad and integration facility would be built right by the beach, and the control and processing facilities would be back near the village. Ground was broken in 2014, but work quickly halted when they realized the ground was not adequate for building foundations. A large dirt pile was formed to compact the soil of the launch site, and the facility was left dormant for several years. In 2018, SpaceX announced they would instead be using the site for testing their Mars rocket, at the time called the Big Falcon rocket, or BFR, and now known as Starship. Around the end of 2018, the dirt pile was spread out to make the test site, and work began on Starhopper, the first ever Starship prototype. Starhopper was very much bare bones, being shorter and made of much thicker steel than the true Starship prototypes would be. It really was just a flying Raptor test stand. In 2019, Starhopper began testing, and in that July, it lifted off for the first time on a short 20 meter hop. It flew again just a month later, this time up to 150 meters, barely landing intact after its Raptor engine failed just off the ground. Today, Starhopper is used as a water tank for the suborbital test site, as well as a camera mount. Starship Mark 1 came next, and this was the first full-scale prototype. In November 2019, it was moved to the pad for initial testing, where it burst during cryogenic proofing. Then came several test tanks, intended to demonstrate new and improved build techniques. The next three prototypes, SN1, 3, and 4, all failed during initial testing as well. In particular, SN4 was destroyed after a propellant umbilical failed to attach properly, causing a methane leak that ignited, destroying the vehicle. The entire test stand had to be rebuilt. But SpaceX's luck finally arrived, and Starship SN5 took to the skies in August of 2020, performing its own 150 meter hop. SN6 did the same only a month later. Both vehicles only featured one Raptor engine and were just a tank section of Starship. But things were starting to get exciting. Around this time, work started on the orbital launch pad. Construction was slow, but SpaceX was already looking to the future. Also, the first high bay at the production site, needed to build the Super Heavy boosters, was nearing completion. In December of 2020, Starship SN8 lifted off, featuring three Raptor engines, a full set of flaps, and a nose cone. SN8 flew all the way up to 12.5 kilometers in altitude, aiming to validate a full landing profile. Unfortunately, although its ascent was near perfect, its engines failed just before landing due to tank pressurization issues, and the vehicle impacted the pad. SN9, 10, and 11 all had unsuccessful landings too, for various reasons. SN10 came very close to sticking the landing, but began leaking propellants after a hard touchdown. Much like its predecessor SN4, this leak would spell its doom. But Starship SN15 did it. It successfully performed the first landing of a full-scale Starship, and it survived to tell the tale. And although it was recently scrapped, SN15 spent two years in the rocket garden, watching its descendants get ready to fly to space. On the booster side, it's been a long ride too. Booster 3 performed the first engine testing of a super heavy booster, and Booster 4 was set to fly on the first integrated flight, but was bumped from that mission in favor of Booster 7. And of course, Booster 9 is set to fly today. After one scrubbed launch attempt and a few vehicle repairs, Booster 7 and Ship 24 lifted off on April 20th, 2023, the first full flight test of Starship. After clearing the tower, 
With three Raptor engines already flamed out, the duo began pitching downrange. Unfortunately, engines continued to shut down, and the vehicle eventually lost control and began to tumble just after passing Max-Q. The stack was autonomously destroyed by the flight termination system. While this four-minute flight didn't hit most milestones that SpaceX set out to accomplish, it undoubtedly provided the engineers with troves of data on the vehicle's flight behavior, its structural performance, and how well 33 well, really actually 30 engines and falling, Raptor engines worked together. It was a big day and a major accomplishment by the team. Pad repairs took some time after the flight, including installing a new proper deluge system. Let's hope this stands the test of 33 Raptors launching later today. Onward to Flight 2.